to, uh, to what you just said. Culture is dynamic. That's number one. Number two, when it comes to the indigenous versus settlers, uh, whatever, divide, we don't have much of that. We have it in Kenya, in some countries, in the sense that there were, um, there were people, of course, who got to a particular place earlier than others. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is the way I describe it. You know, now there is that kind of challenge, tension between the call the settlers and indigenous people. But what we're saying is this: for instance, among the Maasai, female genital mutilation is part of their culture. Should we allow them to continue when we know it's harmful? Among the Maasai, which killing is part of their culture? Should we allow that to continue in the name of culture? So what we're saying there is this. Yes, you can keep your culture, whatever that means. But if there are practices we know that are harmful, that violate the rights of people, human rights, I think it is important we make our cultural practices compatible with human rights. And if it means dropping those practices, please, let's drop them for the sake of cultural progress. Dick, you wanted to say something. Um, I was wanting to ask um, what writings uh, led you to the beliefs of uh, uh, humanism and uh, skepticism? Well, uh, one of them, uh, I think, was uh, Bertrand Russell. Yes. I read about Bertrand Russell because in the seminar, what they, what they tell us is that they, they bring all those very great thinkers like Bertrand Russell. But do you know what they tell us? They will tell you in the exam to uh, kind of counter, uh, counter their arguments. Yes. So, and sometimes, you know, you read the argument, it's very solid and very strong. <laughs> you don't know what to say. But, of course, you have to say something. <laughs> Whether it sounds stupid or not. Because at the end of it all, the other side is, is, is not very sound, reasonably. So, you have to say something, no matter how irrational it is. So... You know, they, they argue very, you know, in a very, you know, very sound. The argument is always very sound, you know. So it's like when they say counter this one, if you look at it and say, well, let me just counter it and pass my exams. <laughs> Later on, I'll, I'll revisit it. Do you see it? So that's Bertrand Russell. I read much about Bertrand Russell. And um, who are the ones I read very early? It's only later on I started, you know, reading um, Ingersoll. I read some Ingersoll and... Um, and other philosophers, you know, I read Hume, Hume was also good, Kant, and all that. So I read some of these people, and they made me, I started questioning the, the French philosopher Descartes, Voltaire, and all that. So, and Nietzsche, and all that. They, they have some of these writings or sayings that actually I, find very, I found very stimulating and inspiring. Mm. Um, there's this idea out there that um, many of the, the reasons why there's so much superstition in Africa is primarily because life is so difficult and um, generally, pe generally speaking people are very uneducated mm. and these sort of things. Do you find that it's primarily that that's the sort of cause of it uh, or is it something else that, that, or is it more of a, a kind of a, an interrelationship between the superstition and the fact that people are, are sort of Poorly educated and, and uh, life is quite difficult as compared to, to the West. Um, I think that education is an issue when it comes to combating, you know, traditional beliefs and superstition. And um, uh, when I try to compare Africans with we Africans with our counterparts in other parts of the world, we found out that uh, we are not doing well in terms of education. Uh, so it's an issue, you see it. But how did uh, Europe get to have enlightenment? Did people come from America to educate Europeans? Did people come from Australia then to come educate Europeans? Did people come from uh, Arctic or Antarctica to educate them? So I just feel that there's, there's need for some kind of, is it a self-driven, you know, Oh, whatever you call it, is it desire to get educated, to get enlightened, and all that. 
And that's why I'm talk, I'm talk, uh, I was talking about people being critical and people rewarding critical thinking. Yeah. You know that this is the truth. You, for instance, God is not physically here. Let us, I don't want to talk about whether he's spiritually here because it, it needs us going to test that one and we can't test it. God is not physically here. Is it true or not? Some people say, shh, don't, don't, don't talk. But the truth is that God is not physically here. Instead of clapping for the person that says, yes, God is not physically here, you demonize the person, you ostracize the person, you punish the person. So the thing there is that it, Africans must have to wake up. That's what I'm saying. That when they say the truth, they should know this is the truth and acknowledge it. Yes. And not blindly believing and allow themselves to be guided by books written centuries ago. By ignorant people, at least by today's standards. Much of what they're saying out of touch with all the realities of today. So they need to acknowledge these things and be ready and have that courage, you know, to say this is the way I look at this thing. Like, like now, I've never spoken to God. You talk to somebody, the person doesn't get back to you. Do you get it? And you still keep telling me that you are talking to somebody. If you tell a person, do you have a mental problem? They say you are being insulted. How can you tell me you are talking to somebody consistently, the person doesn't get back? Hello, I heard what you said. I, I'll think about it. I'll give you feedback in the next two hours. Nothing. Three hours. Nothing. Three years. Nothing. Three centuries. Nothing. And people are still talking to the same person. And it makes sense to many people. Do you see it? So we have to, these hard facts, these hard truths, this taboo, we have to break it. Europe broke it and saw the light and had enlightenment. Africa must break it. Africans must break it for them to see, to see it. If they refuse to do it, then they will remain where they are. The, the, the darkness will keep coming this way. When, when they head it off in Europe or America, it will crash into Africa. They have to be contented with that until they can stand up on their feet and say, this is the way we think, and this is what is good for us, and we don't understand this. Like now, there is, a, um, there is this reluctance in the West to criticize Islam. Yes. The people that should champion the criticism of Islam are Africans. Because they are the people that are on the receiving side, as I'm talking to you here now, of all the discrimination and intolerance. You must have had the bombing in my, in my, in, uh, at the UN building in Abuja. An Islamic group, we don't know, faceless. Uh, we don't even know where they are. We don't, they don't have uniform, they don't have ID card. It's difficult to track them down. They have claimed <coughs> responsibility. Do you get it? Many people have died. Many Nigerians have died. Many Nigerians keep dying as a result of Islamic extremism. And nobody wants to talk. When, 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 when shall we talk? Is it when all of us are dead? When they get access to nuclear or something more dangerous, explosive, and then turn, turn, turn all of us into, into dust, then we start talking? Yeah. I'm not saying that we should be confrontational, but we should make them to understand that this world belongs to everybody and that we allow them to exist and they should allow us to exist. I must tell you, I was one of our skeptical colleagues and he told me that young Muslims hate white people. I asked him why. He said he didn't know. Why? There must be a reason. So what I'm saying here is this. We need to, we need to, we need to say this thing. Yes. Saying it is freedom of expression. Maybe by saying it, we can ignite the light. Because I guess we talk about the new enlightenment. We need it now. Yes. We, have, we see what is happening at the UN. Pakistan will bring the, the resolution. Uh, is, it a, is it a defamation of religion resolution? Pakistan has been taken over by Islamic, Islamists and Islamic terrorists. Pakistan, go home and put your house in order. They will not. They will go to UN to go and sponsor resolution uh, is it, uh, against defamation of uh, religion or something like that. For me, if I have the opportunity, I'll tell the Pakistani delegate, go home. Your house is burning. Terrorists and the Islamists they have taken over the place. People with dress of mufti come to police stations carrying bombs. Look at it. And we are here sponsoring a resolution against what? Against what? What kind of, what conscience do you have to bring such a thing before the whole world? When, 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 when Pakistan is almost an exporter of, of, of Islamists and terrorists. When you say it, they say, oh, you have said something blasphemous. That is the truth. 
Pakistan should go and take care of his, his, his house first before coming to the United Nations. What has he to offer the world? Nothing, as far as I'm concerned. Um, it, it's definitely about education, as you say. Um, I'm wondering about politics, though, because um, South Africa was in a, a terrible state yeah. under apartheid, yeah. and uh, a leader like Mandela came up okay. and uh, created a different sort of society. Yeah. I mean, that South Africa has its problems too, of course, mm. but they set up a, a Bill of Rights. Mm. Um, there was some attempt at you know, creating an education system. Mm. Um, is is that part of the struggle that, that you believe is is important in Nigeria? Um, that you do need uh, political awareness as yeah. much as uh, critical thinking or political awareness to allow freedom of speech and, mm. and a, a good education system and so on. Yeah, you, you see. The caliber of politicians you get is a factor of the, education, the educational system. Yeah, if people are poorly educated, you, 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 you get the, the kind of president like we have in Gambia. Today he's curing HIV and AIDS. Another day he's rounding people up and, and giving them concoctions for witchcraft. Do you see it? Oh, of course, you see, it's all happened in Congo. I told some friends that I met some Congolese, and I told them, I said, this war going on in Congo, is it not time you people stop this war? He said that they, they told me that the war would not end until the mineral has finished. Yes, do you get it? I said, but when the mineral finishes, you people are finished at the same time. <laughs> do you get it? So what I'm saying here is that, you see, for me, I just have a feeling that there is very little somebody can do in terms of changing a society without sound education. Yes. Yes, I, I, people might say, oh, must everybody have a PhD? That's, what, that's really what, what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I'm just talking about education that makes people, that makes people to, number one, appreciate critical thinking, rational thinking, and uh, common sense, and basing decisions on common sense and critical thinking. You don't, just, you don't really need too much education as such. You just need some kind of awareness. You, get it. You, you need to embrace these values and allow these values they kind of to guide your decisions and all that. That's what we need. You get it. So how we're going to realize that is something I just, I don't know. But what happens is that there's need for us to have a movement, to have a group, to have a program that at least that can get people, that I encourage people to think critically and that can provide alternative. And like now we're saying, hey, 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 Africans, look. See what we are suffering as a result of blind faith, as a result of superstition. Can't we change as a result of this, at least because of the pain? Even if ordinarily you may not want to, but let us change so that we stop killing our children, we stop killing our mothers, stop torturing and blaming innocent people you know, for crimes they never committed us or, or evils that happen in the society. So what I think is that as long as we have such, who knows, somebody inspired by those ideas could find himself in a strategic position or a position of leadership, or even could become the president. And with that, we can, the course of the, of, the, of the country could change for the better. That is it. So it's something that we are hoping, you know, that what we're saying, more people will embrace it or feel inspired and think that that is the way the, 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 the country should go. So that is the best we can, you know, we can do, maybe as individuals.